Oh yeah, Diddy got a podcast. The Whitney, the Whitney. Uh, w- w- when she passed away, uh, first of all, I know the world, right? I know the world was devastated. Um, like, like I say, man, you got a few years on me. Uh, I'm 26. I just turned 26, but my mother. Uh, she in no way am I comparing her as a singer to Whitney Houston, but my mother is a a fabulous singer. And I remember as a child, she she would sing all the time around the house. But Jante, when I tell you that once I got older, and by older I mean like in my like late teens, early twenties, which wasn't long ago, I understand. But I started to hear only Whitney Houston in my in my mother's voice, and I'm like, man, I can clearly tell that my mom, my mom listened and admired this woman. And I know she played her music a lot, but man, whenever I listen to my my mother's music or I listen to my mother's just sing, I hear Whitney Houston. So that's the influence she had on my mother, let alone the world. But you personally knew Whitney. Yeah. How did her death impact you, man? What was that like? Um, I mean, you really couldn't. Uh, another one like it's, it's just like when these things happen, man, it's it's surreal because, you know, you when you know people and. You know, and you remember people that as they as they were like, you know, just very full of life. And when someone, you know, is full of life in that manner, it's hard for you to um, imagine, you know, them no longer having life. And it was kind of all connected. I was I was speaking with Larry Jackson yesterday because yesterday was Whitney's birthday. And, um, you know, we were talking about when we were working on that final project, um, they finished, you know, um, they finished the album out with a remake, this, a song for you that she recorded. And so we were in LA and I was, I just happened to stop by the studio uh, and Larry and um, the production team Stargate, they were working on the remake. And, um, you know, I'm just kind of humming and singing. They're like, you know, no, Larry's like, man, go in, go and demo the record. Like go in and demo it for her. Like she would love it if you demo, you know, it for her so she could hear it. And so I, I did the demo, but on that day, the day that we that I did the demo for a song for you, um, it was the day that Michael Jackson had passed. And so we're in the studio, like watching, you know, this unfold. And and then so I always think about that. I'm like, man, you know, we were watching this, watching an icon, and we couldn't believe that this icon had passed. And then we're working on this project. And then, you know, not too far behind another icon, you know, passes. And it was, you know, and it was Whitney. Yeah. Tragic. I think I think it's I think it's it's crazy, man, for lack of a better term. I just think it's crazy how you can have a world full of essentially strangers, right? Who who never knew these people on a personal level. Um, I mean, you really never knew Michael Jackson on a personal level, from my understanding, but you, no. you, you, you knew Whitney. And to have a world full of strangers being packed to like people crying and breaking down and. Yes, yeah, it's, the, it's the it's the music is what it's, ah. it's the life that people saw in them again. Like, you know, when you see people who are just super full of life um, and you realize just the gift, how rare those gifts are. Um, you know, and they're, they're, they're once in a lifetime type of gifts. And, and yeah, so it makes you sad that, you know, that type of gift is no longer with the world because we all enjoyed it. We all could benefit from, from it yeah, and, yeah. and benefited from, from those gifts. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, think about just from an artistic standpoint, how many artists would not exist today? How many female vocalists would not exist today if it weren't for Whitney Houston? And how many just young entertainers, period, would not exist if not for Michael Jackson? Like, you know, they it's he, he's he he's and the she, standard. They, they birthed it up. Yeah. They birth they birth what came. Wow. I I definitely agree. Um was Whitney, um, because obviously I never knew her. Um, God rest her beautiful soul. Um, uh, but from her music, from what I saw, you know, via the internet. It just seemed like she was just a, like you said, a person full of life, a, a beautiful person, a beautiful personality. 
Was she like this all the time whenever you saw her? As far as I remember, yeah, she was always, she was very pleasant. She was very nice and always engaging. She, you know, she was, she was always great. It was always good to see her. So I'm guessing you, you met Bobby Brown here and there. Here and there, yeah. When we, we first um, started on a project um, before the, um, um, I look to you project. We worked on something else and we met Bobby and then I, you know, just met Bobby over, over the years, a couple times, you know, just around Atlanta. Oh, that's another one. I look to you. That's just, oh my goodness. It's just certain songs. It's certain songs that I, that are so great. And maybe you can understand, maybe you can't, I don't know. Everybody's different, but it's certain songs that I personally hear that are so great that especially if that person has passed away and they're no longer with us. And even if they're here, sometimes that song is so great and it takes me to a nostalgic place that I can't listen to it for a long period of time, a long period of time. And you just happen to be a part of a lot of the records that actually fit into that category. 